the term von Neumann architecture, also known as the von Neumann model of the Princeton architecture, derives from a 1945 computer architecture description by the mathematician and early computer scientist John von Neumann and others, first draft of a report on the EDVAC. This describes a design architecture for an electronic digital computer with subdivisions of a processing unit consisting of an arithmetic logic unit and processor registers, a controller unit containing an instruction register and program counter, a memory to store both data and instructions, external mass storage, and input and output mechanisms. The meaning of the term has evolved to mean a stored program computer in which an instruction fetch and a data operation cannot occur at the same time, because they share a common bus. This is referred to as the von Neumann bottleneck and often limits the performance of the system. The design of the von Neumann architecture is simpler than the more modern Harvard architecture which is also a stored program system, but has one dedicated, set of address and data buses for reading data from, and writing data to memory, and another set of address and data buses for fetching instructions. A stored program digital computer is one that keeps its programmed instructions, as well as its data, and read-write, random access memory, RAM. Stored program computers were an advancement over the program-controlled computers of the 1940s, such as the Colossus and the ENIAC, which were programmed by setting switches, and inserting patch leads to route data and to control signals between various functional units. In the vast majority of modern computers, the same memory is used for both data and program instructions, and the von Neumann versus Harvard distinction applies to the cache architecture, not main memory. History the earliest computing machines had fixed programs. Some very simple computers still use this design, either for simplicity or training purposes. For example, a desk calculator, in principle, is a fixed program computer. It can do basic mathematics, but it cannot be used as a word processor or a gaming console. Changing the program of a fixed program machine requires rewiring, restructuring, or redesigning the machine. The earliest computers were not so much programmed as they were designed. Reprogramming, when it was possible at all, was a laborious process, starting with flowcharts and paper notes, followed by detailed engineering designs, and then the often arduous process of physically rewiring and rebuilding the machine. It could take three weeks to set up a program on ENIAC and get it working. With the proposal of the stored program computer this changed. A stored program computer includes by design an instruction set, and can store in memory a set of instructions, a program, that details the computation. A stored program design also allows for self-modifying code. One early motivation for such a facility was the need for a program to increment or otherwise modify the address portion of instructions, which had to be done manually in early designs. This became less important when index registers and indirect addressing became usual features of machine architecture. Another use was to embed frequently used data in the instruction stream using immediate addressing. Self-modifying code has largely fallen out of favor, since it is usually hard to understand and debug, as well as being inefficient under modern processor pipelining and caching schemes. On a large scale, the ability to treat instructions as data is what makes assemblers, compilers and other automated programming tools possible. One can write programs which write programs. On a smaller scale, repetitive i o intensive operations such as the BITBLT image manipulation primitive or pixel and vertex shaders in modern 3D graphics, were considered inefficient to run without custom hardware. These operations could be accelerated on general-purpose processes with on-the-fly compilation just-in-time compilation technology, for instance, code-generating programs one form of self-modifying code that has remained popular. There are drawbacks to the von Neumann design. Aside from the von Neumann bottleneck described below, program modifications can be quite harmful, either by accident or design. In some simple stored program computer designs, a malfunctioning program can damage itself, other programs, or the operating system, possibly leading to a computer crash. Memory protection and other forms of access control can usually protect against both accidental and malicious program modification. Development of the stored program concept The mathematician Alan Tering 
who had been alerted to a problem of mathematical logic by the lectures of Maximum Newman at the University of Cambridge, wrote a paper in 1936 entitled On Computable Numbers, with an application to the Entschiedungsproblem, which was published in the Proceedings of the London Mathematical Society. In it he described a hypothetical machine which he called a universal computing machine, and which is now known as the universal tearing machine. The hypothetical machine had an infinite store, memory in today's terminology, that contained both instructions and data. John von Neumann became acquainted with tearing, while he was a visiting professor at Cambridge in 1935, and also during Tearing's PhD year at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey during 1936-37. Whether he knew of Tearing's paper of 1936 at that time is not clear. In 1936 Conrad's use also anticipated in two patent applications that machine instructions could be stored in the same storage used for data. Independently, J. Press Perekett and John Morchley, who were developing the ENIAC at the Moore School of Electrical Engineering, at the University of Pennsylvania, wrote about the stored program concept in December 1943. In planning a new machine, Ed Vac, Eckert wrote in January 1944, that they would store data and programs in a new addressable memory device, a mercury metal delay line memory. This was the first time the construction of a practical stored program machine was proposed. At that time, he and Morchley were not aware of Tearing's work. Von Neumann was involved in the Manhattan Project at the Los Alamos National Laboratory, which required huge amounts of calculation. This drew him to the ENIAC project during the summer of 1944. There he joined into the ongoing discussions on the design of this stored program computer, the EDVAC. As part of that group, he volunteered to write up a description of it, and produced the first draft of a report on the EDVAC which included ideas from Eckert and Morchley. It was unfinished when his colleague Hermann Goldstein circulated it with only von Neumann's name on it, to the consternation of Eckert and Morchley. The paper was read by dozens of von Neumann's colleagues in America and Europe, and influenced the next round of computer designs. Hence, von Neumann was not alone in developing the idea of the stored program architecture, and Jack Copeland considers that it is historically inappropriate to refer to electronic stored program digital computers as von Neumann machines. Apostrophe. His Los Alamos colleague Stan Frankel said of von Neumann's regard for Tearing's ideas, I know that in or about 1943 or 44 von Neumann was well aware of the fundamental importance of Tearing's paper of 1936. Von Neumann introduced me to that paper, and at his urging I studied it with care. Many people have acclaimed Von Neumann as the father of the computer in a modern sense of the term, but I am sure that he would never have made that mistake himself. He might well be called the midwife, perhaps, but he firmly emphasized to me, and to others I am sure, that the fundamental conception is owing to tearing insofar as not anticipated by Babbage. Both Tearing and von Neumann, of course, also made substantial contributions to the reduction to practice of these concepts, but I would not regard these as comparable in importance with the introduction and explication of the concept of a computer able to store in its memory its program of activities, and of modifying that program in the course of these activities. At the time that the first draft report was circulated, Tearing was producing a report entitled Proposed Electronic Calculator which described, in engineering and programming detail, his idea of a machine that was called the Automatic Computing Engine, ACE. He presented this to the Executive Committee of the British National Physical Laboratory on February 19, 1946. Although Tearing knew from his wartime experience at Bletchley Park that what he proposed was feasible, the secrecy surrounding Colossus, that was subsequently maintained for several decades, prevented him from saying so. Various successful implementations of the ACE design were produced. Both von Neumann's and Tearing's papers described stored program computers, but von Neumann's earlier paper achieved greater circulation and the computer architecture it outlined became known as the von Neumann architecture. In the 1953 publication Faster Than Thought, a symposium on digital computing machines, edited by B.V. Bowden, a section in the chapter on computers in America reads as follows. The machine of the Institute for Advanced Studies, Princeton. 
In 1945, Professor J. Von Neumann, who was then working at the Moore School of Engineering in Philadelphia, where the ENIAC had been built, issued on behalf of a group of his co-workers a report on the logical design of digital computers. The report contained a fairly detailed proposal for the design of the machine which has since become known as the EDDAC, Electronic Discrete Variable Automatic Computer. This machine has only recently been completed in America, but the von Neumann report inspired the construction of the EDSAC, Electronic Delay Storage Automatic Calculator, in Cambridge, see page 130. In 1947, Burks, Goldstein and von Neumann published another report which outlined the design of another type of machine, a parallel machine this time, which should be exceedingly fast, capable perhaps of 20,000 operations per second. They pointed out that the outstanding problem in constructing such a machine was in the development of a suitable memory, all the of which were instantaneously accessible, and at first they suggested the use of a special vacuum tube, called the Selectron, which had been invented by the Princeton laboratories of the RCA. These tubes were expensive and difficult to make, so von Neumann subsequently decided to build a machine based on the Williams memory. This machine, which was completed in June, 1952 in Princeton, has become popularly known as the Maniac. The design of this machine has inspired that of half a dozen or more machines which are now being built in America, all of which are known affectionately as Joniacs. In the same book, the first two paragraphs of a chapter on ACE read as follows. Automatic computation at the National Physical Laboratory one of the most modern digital computers which embodies developments and improvements in the technique of automatic electronic computing, was recently demonstrated at the National Physical Laboratory, Tiddington, where it has been designed and built by a small team of mathematicians and electronics research engineers on the staff of the laboratory, assisted by a number of production engineers from the English Electric Company. Limited. The equipment so far erected at the laboratory is only the pilot model of a much larger installation which will be known as the automatic computing engine, but although comparatively small in bulk, and containing only about 800 thermionic valves, as can be judged from plates 12th, 13th, and 14th, it is an extremely rapid and versatile calculating machine. The basic concepts and abstract principles of computation by a machine were formulated by Dr. A. M. Tering, FRS, in a paper one read before the London Mathematical Society in 1936, but work on such machines in Britain was delayed by the war. In 1945, however, an examination of the problems was made at the National Physical Laboratory by Mr. J. R. Wimersley, then superintendent of the Mathematics Division of the Laboratory. He was joined by Dr. Tearing and a small staff of specialists, and, by 1947, the preliminary planning was sufficiently advanced to warrant the establishment of the special group already mentioned. In April, 1948, the latter became the electronics section of the laboratory, under the charge of Mr. F. M. Colebrook. Early von Neumann Architecture Computers the first draft described a design that was used by many universities and corporations to construct their computers. Among these various computers, only ILIAC and ORDVAC had compatible instruction sets. Manchester Small Scale Experimental Machine, SSEM, nicknamed Baby University of Manchester, England, made its first successful run of a stored program on June 21, 1948. EDSAC, University of Cambridge, England, was the first practical stored program electronic computer, May 1949. Manchester Mark I, University of Manchester, England, developed from the SSEM, June 1949. CSIRIC, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, Australia, November 1949. ORDAC, U Illinois, at Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland completed November 1951. IS Machine at Princeton University, January 1952. Maniac I at Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory, March 1952. Iliac at the University of Illinois, September 1952. Besom I in Moscow, 1952. Avidac at Argonne National Laboratory, 1953. Oracle at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, June 1953. Besk in Stockholm, 1953. Joniak at Rand Corporation, January 1954. Dask in Denmark, 1955. Wiesak in Rehoboth, 1955. Perman Munich, 1956. 
Ciliac in Sydney, 1956. Early Stored Program Computers. The date information in the following chronology is difficult to put into proper order. Some dates are for first running a test program, some dates are the first time the computer was demonstrated or completed, and some dates are for the first delivery or installation. The IBM SSEC had the ability to treat instructions as data and was publicly demonstrated on January 27, 1948. This ability was claimed in a U.S. patent. However it was partially electromechanical, not fully electronic. In practice, instructions were read from paper tape due to its limited memory. The Manchester SSEM, the baby, was the first fully electronic computer to run a stored program. It ran a factoring program for 52 minutes on June 21, 1948, after running a simple division program, and a program to show that two numbers were relatively prime. The ENIAC was modified to run as a primitive read-only stored program computer, using the function tables for program ROM, and was demonstrated as such on September 16, 1948, running a program by Adele Goldstein for von Neumann. The Binnick ran some test programs in February, March, and April 1949, although was not completed until September 1949. The Manchester Mark I developed from the SSEM project. An intermediate version of the Mark I was available to run programs in April 1949, but was not completed until October 1949. The EDSAC ran its first program on May 6, 1949. The EDVAC was delivered in August 1949, but it had problems that kept it from being put into regular operation until 1951. The CSIRMKI ran its first program in November 1949. The SEEK was demonstrated in April 1950. The Pilot Ace ran its first program on May 10, 1950 and was demonstrated in December 1950. The SWAC was completed in July 1950. The Whirlwind was completed in December 1950, and was in actual use in April 1951. The first era Atlas, later the commercial era 1101 slash Univac 1101, was installed in December 1950. Evolution. Single system bus evolution of the architecture. Through the decades of the 1960s and 1970s computers generally became both smaller and faster, which led to some evolutions in their architecture. For example, memory mapped I/L allows input and output devices to be treated the same as memory. A single system bus could be used to provide a modular system with lower cost. This is sometimes called a streamlining of the architecture. In subsequent decades, simple microcontrollers would sometimes omit features of the model to lower cost and size. Larger computers added features for higher performance. Von Neumann bottleneck. The shared bus between the program memory and data memory leads to the von Neumann bottleneck, the limited throughput, data transfer rate, between the CPU and memory compared to the amount of memory. Because program memory and data memory cannot be accessed at the same time, throughput is much smaller than the rate at which the CPU can work. This seriously limits the effective processing speed, when the CPU is required to perform minimal processing on large amounts of data. The CPU is continually forced to wait for needed data to be transferred to or from memory. Since CPU speed and memory size have increased much faster than the throughput between them, the bottleneck has become more of a problem, a problem whose severity increases with every newer generation of CPU. The term von Neumann bottleneck was coined by John Backus in his 1977 ACM Tearing Award lecture. According to Backus, Surely there must be a less primitive way of making big changes in the store than by pushing vast numbers of words back and forth through the von Neumann bottleneck. Not only is this tube the literal bottleneck for the data traffic of a problem, but, more importantly, it is an intellectual bottleneck that has kept us tied to word at a time thinking instead of encouraging us to think in terms of the larger conceptual units of the task at hand. Thus programming is basically planning and detailing the enormous traffic of words through the von Neumann bottleneck, and much of that traffic concerns not significant data itself, but where to find it. The performance problem can be alleviated, to some extent, by several mechanisms. Providing a cache between the CPU and the main memory, providing separate caches, or separate access paths for data and instructions, the so-called modified Harvard architecture, using branch predictor algorithms and logic, and providing a limited CPU stack, to
to reduce memory access of four of the ways performance is increased. The problem can also be sidestepped somewhat by using parallel computing, using for example the non-uniform memory access NUMA, architecture. This approach is commonly employed by supercomputers. It is less clear whether the intellectual bottleneck that Bacchus criticized has changed much since 1977. Bacchus's proposed solution has not had a major influence. Modern functional programming and object-oriented programming are much less geared towards pushing vast numbers of words back and forth than earlier languages like Fortran were, but internally, that is still what computers spend much of their time doing, even highly parallel supercomputers. In some cases, emerging Minrista technology may be able to circumvent the von Neumann bottleneck. Non-von Neumann processes the National Semiconductor COP8 was introduced in 1986, it has a modified Harvard architecture. Perhaps the most common kind of non-von Neumann structure used in modern computers is content addressable memory, CAM, and computers is content addressable memory, CAM, and computers is content addressable memory, CAM.